Hi, I'm Dylan Gowan, and welcome back to another installment of Overkill Global, Banger TV's weekly international heavy metal review show. Today, I'm going to be going back to Oceania to talk about Polynesian-influenced metal bands from New Zealand. So since the majority of these bands are of Maori descent, it feels like we should give you a very brief history about the Maori people. Now, the Maori people are the indigenous people of Aotearoa, which is now called New Zealand. What the Maori are really famous for is their traditions, their artwork, the Taimoko face tattoos, and of course, the famous haka. Now, it's a dance that's not necessarily for war. It's actually a very versatile dance. They incorporate it in a lot of different celebrations like weddings and greetings, as well as showing signs of respect at sporting events. And they even perform it at funerals as well. Now, what's interesting about the face tattoos is they're actually each customized between the person's mana and as well as their family lineage. They each tell a story and it's a really striking image. This unique culture was nearly lost due to colonization, and it wasn't until the 1970s where things started to improve with the passing of the Race Relations Act. Today, their land and culture is being preserved through unconventional means, and that being within metal music. Now, metal in New Zealand really took off in the 1980s with groups like Rose Bayonet, Strike Master, and Confessor leading the charge. And there was starting to be a big scene developing in the city of Wellington. Now, JREM Records was releasing all of the best in early uh, heavy metal bands and it kind of was very similar to the thrash and new album scenes that you see in Britain as well as the west coast of the United States. There's even a compilation record to check out all of New Zealand's old bands that were really kind of helping developing the scene and that was 1984's Three Points of Metal. So if you want to get kind of an early sense of what metal was like in the 1980s, I highly recommend checking out that record. Over the past several decades, the scene has really evolved with groups like Devil's Skin, Ulcerate, and Set on End getting massive international attention. Alongside those bands, we've started to see kind of a new scene that was really emerging where a lot of New Zealand bands are starting to incorporate a lot more Polynesian influences within their sound. So for more details on Polynesian-influenced metal bands, let's hear from a local expert. Kia ora koutou katoa, uh, greetings to you all, uh, it's Henry and Lewis here from Alien Weaponry and we're here to talk to you guys about the New Zealand metal scene. Um, we've got a pretty good metal scene over here, would you say? Yeah, pretty alright for a we're, country of 5 million. Yeah, we're a pretty small country, um, our, our cities are spread pretty far apart so that means uh, a lot of bands that are playing uh, shows around here are travelling pretty long distances to do shows. Um, and yeah, we've actually got two separate islands here as well, so um, if you're from the North Island, generally you're flying stuff over to the South Island in order to play shows, which is uh, always a challenge, but as far as doing shows over here, we get some pretty wild crowds. Um, us New Zealanders know how to go hard in the pit, a lot of passion here for metal, and uh, you know, it may not be the biggest genre in New Zealand, but the love it does get is genuine. So just a quick disclaimer, this isn't a top five. This is just basically in chronological order of the scene. So I guess my question is for this video, what elements of Polynesian culture do they incorporate within metal? And how do they incorporate it to carve their own identity amongst all the other bands in their respective subgenres. So this is a fairly new scene, and we're kicking things off with Alien Weaponry with their debut album 2, which came out June 1st, 2018 on Napalm Records. <laughs> Now, I must admit, I've always heard of this band, but I never got a chance to listen to them. Holy crap, this album is freaking sick. This music is pretty much wall-to-wall -wall thrash metal, incorporating with intense grooves that pretty much gave me intense whiplash throughout the whole entire album. It immediately just kicks you in the head with tracks like Ru'ana Te Wanua and Holding Your Breath, and it just bludgeons you to death with solid riff after solid riff, and it just doesn't stop. Here's an interesting fact about the track Ru'ana Te Wanua. The song was inspired by an historical battle that took place in 1864 involving the Dijon brothers' great-great-grandfather. Just over 200 Maori soldiers were up against an invading army of 1,700 
British soldiers. And with clever tactics, despite being outnumbered, they were able to outsmart the British forces. And the moral of the story is, don't fuck with the Maori. The majority of these songs are sung in Te Rio, which is an endangered Maori language. Te Rio is actually the most common language spoken amongst the Maori people, so a lot of these bands on this list are going to be singing in that language. My favorite track on this album has to be Kai Tangata, and it kind of starts off with this really kind of ominous build into this really heavy, just chugging riffing part. I would say that these guys are probably my favorite thrash band. They kind of remind me a little bit of Sepultura. They even performed the haka during their concerts, and you have to see the clip what they did in Copenhagen. They did it in front of their audience, and some of the audience members are doing it back, and it just sends chills down your spine. There is a reason why they are the face of New Zealand metal right now. These guys are just gonna get bigger and bigger with more releases, so two is an excellent debut, and that's why I'm giving it a four and a half out of five skulls. So next up, we're moving actually a couple of months. This is Shepherd's Rain with their debut self-titled album, which was released independently. It came out September 21st of 2018. But this band is so awesome that I also want to talk about their two singles that they just released over the past couple of years, which is Le Manu, which came out in 2019, and Aga, which came out in 2020. Yeah. So what's different about these guys versus all the other bands on this list is that they incorporate more Samoan elements into their sound than Maori. In fact, originally this episode was going to be called Maori Inspired Metal, but I didn't want to misrepresent anybody, so that's why we changed the name to Polynesian Influenced Metal Bands. Their first album did incorporate some Samoan elements, but it wasn't really until the two singles, Lemanu and Aga, where they made those elements really a part of the songwriting. Their biggest song, Lemanu, was one song that I just couldn't stop listening to. It was just so catchy and it's just so filled with just a ton of different great riffs and the way that they build into the chorus. I remember when I was writing the script for this episode, all I could hear in my head was La Manu Samoa, La Manu Samoa. The song is actually a reimagined version of the Sivatao, which is another form of dance that's more in line with Samoan culture. I mean, these guys generated 2 million views on YouTube. So with those kinds of numbers, who needs a label? Their next song, Aga, was more of thanking their family for support. It's funny, when you listen to the song, you feel like there's a lot of anger when really it's about being humble and being grateful for how far the band's come. I got sidetracked with those two singles. Let's talk about their first album. It was really kind of a combination of like thrash, death, and prog. So there was a band that was kind of really trying to find their sounds. And they did add some Samoan elements early with the, um, I think I have it in my notes here. It's called a, um, Pati, like a plastic cowbell, but it's played with two sticks. But anyways, it, just look up the sound. It looks, it sounds really, really cool. There's definitely some notable highlights on this album. I love the piano part that was kind of dream theater inspired and legend. I love the grooves and rain. The intro was very heavy. It's got a lot of thrash elements. A lot of the lyrics on their first record have to do with personal struggles and Probably my favorite song on this record has to be Concrete Walls. There's just so much emotion in the vocals, how it just gets more intense as the song progresses. The piano really gets busier and kind of gets more classically inspired. This first album was about them kind of experimenting with different sounds to kind of find their own identity. And it feels like they really were very solid from the get-go, but it wasn't until the first those two singles, Le Manu and Aga, where they really started to kind of hone in on their sound. They're killer players killer songwriters, and you definitely need to check them out after this video. So basically, so this is a little different for a skull rating. Um, their entire discography, I would say, is a four and a half out of five skulls. So check out Shepherd's Rain because they're fucking awesome. So up next is something a little bit different. This We're actually jumping to 2020. On April 9th, there was a release by a solo black metal project. He released an album on Bandcamp, and it's also on cassette. This is Kai Parau's debut EP called Patu Parehi. So 
So what's different about this particular project is that majority of the songs are about Maori folklore and about Maori legends. And Patuparahi are mythical creatures who live in the forest or mountains. The band name is really interesting. In Tirio, it means eating the decomposing body of an enemy for revenge. That's pretty metal. I must admit, I'm not a fan of black metal, but the riffs on this are super, super catchy. They're kind of like death and roll and kind of crust punk influenced. So if I had to compare this project to another band, I would say it's kind of like early mayhem and dark throne. One to expect with a solo black metal project is the production's very kind of lo-fi. The guitars are screeching. The vocals are piercing. They're right in your face. The only negative thing really is that the drums are programmed. However, the riffs on this EP are really, really catchy. The title track, Patuparahi, is very, very ambient from the get-go. Kind of adds this really unsettling feeling and eventually it just kicks the door down with just these crazy, awesome, catchy riffs. And I love the incorporation of the pukaya. It's kind of like this long trumpet that's carved out of wood and there's a lot of vines wrapped around it. And it kind of sounds like a mix between a trumpet French horn and a train screeching, but it's really cool the way that it's incorporated into this entire EP. There's a lot to unpack with this EP. If you're a fan of black metal, you should definitely check these guys out. That's why I'm gonna give this EP a three and a half out of five skulls. So the last band on our list, we're gonna jump ahead a couple of months to September 12th of 2020. This is Pull Down the Sun with their debut album of Valleys and Mountains, which came out independently. When creating this episode, I was at least trying to find one prog band, and god damn it, I finally found one. And I gotta say, these are just absolutely killer musicians, and I just loved, loved, loved this album. The band takes inspiration from the Maori legend Maui. One of the most famous stories of his was actually taking a bunch of vines and wrapping it around the sun and pulling it down. I mean, that guy is OP as fuck. The album opens up with great tracks like Aka, and where a raw, wa ri ra. There we go, wa ri ra. There we go. That's it. I got it. It just delivers crushing drumming, hypnotic guitars, and incorporates a lot of atmospheric elements in a very ethereal moments. If you're a fan of like groups like the Ocean, they kind of incorporate a lot of dynamics, and that's really kind of the the word of the day with this band is that they use the dynamics of incorporating many different styles to basically help elevate all of these songs. Like they include elements of shoegaze music, post-metal, death metal, and it's just the way that they are able to kind of blend all of this makes it a really interesting experience and it makes it a really solid album. You can tell that the title track of Valleys and Mountains is very much inspired by Gojira. You have kind of the crazy tapping parts. The vocals kind of remind me of Sasha from Intronaut and Joe from Gojira. The band is not afraid to wear their influences on their sleeve, but also doing it in a way that's really kind of incorporating Maori elements. So it's a little bit of taking elements of modern extreme metal and then having all of these songs being based around Maui or other Maori traditions and stories. My favorite track would definitely be Inoi or Inoi or Inoi. Anyways, it's a 10 minute long, just epic track. Again, their use of dynamics, super effective with it. How it goes from these kind of atmospheric ethereal moments brings into this crazy drum groove. And they don't really use a lot of odd time signatures. They're not that kind of prog band. They have one really solid riff and they just kind of build around it throughout the whole track. And Luckily, it's not boring. It's always very catchy. You're always engaged with this record. I'm surprised not a lot of people are talking about this record because I think it really deserves a lot of attention. Hopefully you guys check them out because I really enjoyed this album. My skull rating will be easily a four and a half out of five skulls. So what can we really take away from this episode? Well, each band is doing their own version of incorporating Polynesian traditions within their music. And it really kind of helps save in the T-Rio language as well as passing down different stories to another generation. These bands don't use it as a gimmick. It's just a really unique way of telling different stories through metal music that can only really be done in this part of the world. 
So here's some honorable mentions from our Patreon donors. Miles suggests that we check out The Owl with Big Googly Eyes. I think I remember seeing that record as being more of a folk metal band from New Zealand, but definitely a fun album to check out. Mystic Mind says definitely check out Alien Weaponry. Well, so if you guys need a reminder, definitely check out Alien Weaponry. And Thomas said, if you're looking for a Polynesian metal band, he recommends a French Polynesian band called Tiriku with their album Itika Matau. Hopefully you have some new bands to check out. It was really a lot of fun researching this episode. If I mispronounce any of the band's names or songs in this video, I apologize. Definitely, definitely check out all the other episodes of Overkill Global Season 2. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Patreon campaign. Check out some of the other reviews that we do on this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching.